afford that. Oh. Um, okay. Vanessa, do you want to introduce yourself and then you're more than welcome to? Yes, I will do. Hello, I'm Vanessa Stanley. I'm the deputy principal at the UTC and I, um, I've been here since the beginning. So um, I work with Neil Patterson to set up the UTC um, for when we opened in 2013. Now, historically, I'm uh, an engineering graduate. Um, so I, I was an engineering graduate and actually then ended up quite happily going into teaching. But I think one of the best things for me now is the fact that I'm teaching engineering. I'm not teaching just physics. I'm actually teaching engineering and gone back to my passion. So it's really, really nice um, to be in a school where I can do that and show, the, show young people how amazing for me, engineering can be. And I'll tell a, li a little bit more about our specialisms as I go through. Um, so shall I, shall I start, Simon? Just put your thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Shall I just keep going? Righty ho, will do. So welcome to um, a kind of online open event. I'm really focusing um, what I'm talking about for September 2022 start. Okay, really quite excited. Um, I know we've only kind of almost just started this academic year, but that's the way of schools, isn't it? We all look forward to what the next exciting episode. And I think one of the, the, the most exciting things about UTCs is that our students come in in year 10. They're brand new to us in year 10 and also new to us in year 12. So as a UTC, over half our students come in brand new in September. It is a lovely thing to happen. So really, really good. So let me start and let me go. There we go. Right now, normally there's a lot, Mr. Patterson very often does a lot of these talks. Now, those cars sitting in front of you on the, on the screen are McLaren's and he is a more unusual head teacher because he is an ex chief engineer from McLaren. So he comes to the school world, the education world, from the business world. And that's where he brings a real business focus into this building. There are a lot of teachers, absolutely. But what he brings is that business side um, and the knowledge of what's going on out there in that really, really fast moving field of engineering. Now, I will spend a little longer on engineering because we are positioned here at Silverstone in one of the fastest growing technology areas within the country. Um, and there's a huge amount of investment. If any of you have just driven past the circuit, and I hope you're all booking to do the lap of lights, um, you drive past, you will see the brand new Aston Martin factory that's going up. You'll also see brand new um, industrial units that are going up all the way around on that Dadford Road. You know, what a, an amazing place. These are all industries that feed, in some respect, F1, but also feed mainstream engineering. And some of them are extremely cutting edge industries. But we know from all the research that engineering needs, what's that, 186,000 skilled recruits each year up to 2024, okay? There is a shortfall in engineering. We need more people. Um, there's an annual shortfall of 20,000 people from engineering graduates. You know, and our students from here, some of them move on straight to jobs, some of them move into apprenticeships, and some of them go to university at 18. Um, now, I am going to spend a little bit of time explaining the difference between what I call mechanicking and engineering, because I think it's key that we get the right definition and understand where the UTC is, you know, driving our students towards, what we're focusing on. Um, there is another thing, diversity. The engineering workforce is currently 94% white and 92% male. 
the en engineering companies know that they're missing out on creativity and input because of that bias. And they are looking to, yes, even up that bias. <clears throat> um, and almost um, half of engineering companies say that a shortfall is reducing um, and stopping their growth. So they are looking for new people. Uh, and we want to be able to go to all the companies around us, go, well, come to us first. We've got the best engineers around here. Come here first. All those companies as well, all those companies are running business and events in order to sell their product. And we want them to come here to find the right people. So that's why we are here where we are. Um, there you go, the summary again. <clears throat> Now, what we've got is why UTCs, what are we addressing? Um, and we're not the only university technical college. Well, we're addressing empty shelves. We're addressing that shortfall of people. And we're addressing the fact that actually students coming out from just what mainstream school, they don't necessarily understand or have the skills to move straight into the industries we are looking at. So we're trying to address the empty shelves and the missing pieces. And UTCs are trying to address that actually across this whole country. And they're not just looking at engineering. There's a variety of specialisms, all technical, across the country. Now, the other thing that we know, and I certainly know in education, okay, education progresses. One of the students said to me, I think it was yesterday, they said, but exams were easy in your day, miss. I went, no, they weren't, but they were different. But everything has progressed. Knowledge has progressed. The, what, we, what we learn, the way we learn, such as this, has progressed. But what, even though we're progressing, engineering has progressed faster and faster and faster. So although actually our education curricula are evolving and becoming more relevant, engineering is evolving faster. So the links that the UTCs have with businesses helps the students to recognize, okay, engineering has moved on that fast. Um, I was talking with my form this morning just about um, the electric vehicles. We were talking we were talking about COP26 um, COP and the fact that we were looking um, to phase out um, new pr production of new um, petrol and diesel vehicles. And they were saying, but battery technology is not good enough. And I was talking about the fact that, well, okay, with that deadline, all of the industries are focusing their research, their knowledge together to bridge that gap and enable yeah, to have cars that can go from, you know, uh, London to Scotland and not need a recharge. And also to look at the fact, how are we going to make lorries, all of them electric? What about tow vehicles that are towing? Using electric vehicles for those, addressing all of the issues. We know that engineering moves on faster than education. And what we're trying to do at the UTC is bridge that gap and show the students the bigger picture. Although some of the syllabuses they've got are not as forward thinking as the industries they're going to move directly into. So here we go, what is a UTC? Well, it provides an exciting um, and innovative learning environment. We are only for 14 to 18 year olds here at the UTC in Silverstone. What we're trying to offer, what we aim to offer is technical and skills-based education. We're looking and focusing on employability we, um, we aim to introduce students to industry standard equipment so that when they move into industry, they have a far greater understanding of the world they're going to move into. Um, our ethos and curriculum is heavily influenced by employers. We want to stay relevant to them. Um, and all UTCs have at least one specialism. We've actually got two here. We've got high performance engineering, and we've got business studies with events. I will state here now, it is high performance engineering and it is aiming at getting engineers into all sectors. 
we are not purely focusing on motorsport. Of course, we do have a lot of students who enter motorsport. You would do where, from where we're located, but we're not purely motorsport. I've got students who've gone into aeronautical engineering, students who've gone into civil engineering. Um, I've got students going into the forces. I've got students just looking at electrical and electronics, product design. So all aspects of engineering, I've got actually architecture as well, from the basis of high performance engineering. And we've got business studies with events. You know, we've got students who have moved into events management. We've got students who've looked at accountancy, um, project management, um, travel. So a wide range of options there and all aspects of business administration, of course. Um, so the specialisms help to feed the industries locally and globally and nationally. Where are the UTCs? Well, there's a little picture. So there's your little picture on the left and you can see, all right, the Baker Deering Trust logo and you can see the UTCs and you can see them a little more locally around us now. So they are across the country. Okay. Um, and where do our students come from? Well, you can see that we've got some quite a few little outliers here. We've got the Channel Islands. We've had a student from the Channel Islands. We've got, had a student from Scotland. Um, we've had a student, um, here we go, right, it was, I think we got was that Oslo, looking up there. Um, so we've got students from um, all over. You can see that the vast majority are closer to us, of course, but yes, we do get students from a wide range of places. Getting looking a little closer, you can see that some of our students do travel quite a long way to come to us. And I, I think all of them know that when they leave us, they have on their CV Silverstone UTC. Silverstone is a global brand. And as a global brand, they can promote themselves. And employers ask questions. Excuse me, you went to Silverstone? I thought that was a racing circuit. And they go, no, excuse me. It's a university technical college um, sitting just next to the uh, old start finish straight um, on the perimeter road. So no, it's a fantastic uh, talking point. Um, for employers and we've got a lot of alumni who have already gone out into the world of work who promote Silverstone UTC um, and employers look because they're so pleased with the employees they've already got that they come back and go yes please we'd like some more so we are very very proud of our students and where they go um, a bit closer up still and if you look at that, you can see that our students come from little clusters. So um, you'll see later on, the little clusters they come from is where we've developed our bus routes. So the bus routes feed where the students actually have, have arrived from. Um, and that's later on in my slide. So you can see we've got a big group coming from Milton Keynes. We've got a group that come in from Northampton, um, Brackley, Banbury, Buckingham, Wellingborough. So you can see where the major places they come from, plus all the surrounding villages. Now, where do our students go? Okay, here we go, education. Right, at 16, uh, we do have students who go, I would really, really like um, an apprenticeship. I'm going to be straightforward and say that at 16, it is not always the easiest to get an apprenticeship because 16 year olds can't drive. There are some utterly amazing apprenticeships around at 16. Um, so, and at 16, you can move on to an advanced apprenticeship. So that's a level three apprenticeship with a company nearby. And I've had um, 16 year olds interviewed at the same time as 18 year olds for different apprenticeships. So you can go at 16 to an apprenticeship. Um, and I've got students who stay on with us because actually I do see our curriculum as a four year journey. It's not just two years. It is a four year journey. You know, in key stage four, you will learn a certain amount. But actually, it is key stage five where you grow and practice your knowledge further that enables you to move on easier and faster. I do have students who um, 
move on to the National College for Motorsport because actually they, their sole aim is to be a mechanic on a car um, and be in the pit lane. Um, and would always say what a great opportunity the National College for Motorsport is completely aiming at 16 year olds at getting them into an apprenticeship with a race team. So really, really good. And they are part of the Bedford College group as well, which is what we are part of. Um, um, and so there we go. And we have a lot of students who stay on for further studies within the sixth form. Now, where do our sixth formers go and look at the results? So at the end of our courses in the sixth form, our four year journey, 55% of our students gained uh, the equivalent of three A's at A levels in their UCAS points. I think that's quite spectacular. Um, our event students, and this is a remember, we haven't had um, the normal exam season for two years. So we are going back a little bit, um, but uh, business students and event students, their average grade was a distinction, just below a distinction, so it's distinction minus. And the average grade for our engineering students was a distinction star minus. We do have students who in the, uh, their sixth form studies, choose to study um, A-levels, only A-levels, and their average grade was a C minus. Overall, the average A-level equivalent grade per entry on UCAS was B plus, and we got a 96% pass rate from all students in their entries. So looking forwards, results are very strong. More important to us is, our, is getting our students to places of employment or courses or apprenticeships that they really, really want. So results matter, but actually destinations are where we want to be aiming our students. So this is where they go, we've got education. So in Key Stage 5, 55% um, two years ago, uh, yes, went, um, carried on in education. All right, 18% um, went to apprenticeships. If I go back to the previous year, it was a roughly 40% in apprenticeships and 40% in went to university. So it really varies here year on year. There is no pattern. What, what we're very proud to do is to say every student here is unique. They, they don't follow a model and we want to support them in whichever direction they want to go. Um, sometimes, and I'm a year 13 tutor and Mr. Hollis is a year 12 tutor, sometimes we feel like we're tearing our hair out because everybody's going a different direction. But actually, that's the really exciting bit. You know, one conversation I had today with one of my students, one of my tutees was, I want to get into weapons um, engineering. OK, let's look how we're doing that one. Great question. You know, that's what he wants to do. Fantastic. Um, we do get students going straight, by the way, into work. Um, one of um, my students who was with us in the first four years, it started with year 10 and went through to year 13. He was the first young man we got across the road. They're now Aston Martin. He got in at Force India. He popped back and it was lovely to hear from him. He started off um, doing composite layup and he's now running um, the paint shop as well as doing that. So it was really, really nice to see him. So we, and he went straight in to work, okay? Um, and has progressed his way through. It's absolutely lovely. We want to hear from our students and find out what they're doing. Where have they gone? Oh my gosh, look at that. And it grows every single year. Um, so FCO, it's FCDO services now. Um, that was project management, IT apprenticeships. Um, I'm trying to, I think there's a, a, been one more. So we've, we've sent students there nearly every year. Langer Rourke's on that screen. So that was civil engineering, Boeing. Um, I've got stu uh, a, a young man who's gone off to get his EASA licenses to take planes apart. Of course, you've got Red Bull, Aston Martin, Cosworth, Marla. There you go, JCB, take your pick, of course, as well as the forces um, who do, again, have amazing apprenticeships. Now, I'm not convinced whether this is running, but Aston Martin did have the most awesome apprenticeship. Um, and um, while it was running, and I'm hoping it's going to come back, um, they took some amazing students from us. 
All right. Um, they found a great benefit working with the local university technical colleges. They've got one very close to us, uh, close to them, near Warwick and us, because it's how the students come understanding how their learning relates to the real world. Um, Aston Martin said their employability skills stood out from other candidates. They integrate and excel in the workplace due to having had real world experience and being aware of what the employer wants of them. Um, and if we little picture, there you go. Uh, it was three of them. Um, two of them went actually at 16 and one went at 18. So those um, young people were part of the UTC and moved to Aston Martin. Um, you will please um, go and see our Ofsted report. It is quite old now. Um, and it painted a picture which is not, is one small part of us. I think all of us, whether it's business or schools, we are open to coming, people coming in and going, that is not quite right. You need to improve it. That's what we all do. We all do in the world of work. And that's what we've done here. We weren't overly happy with what they said and, and believed, you know, that it wasn't completely us. So come and see. And I think you'll find we have changed quite rightly the bits that they said they didn't think were good enough. And we've worked and developed our courses and everything further as we were doing and continue to do. And comments from parents, comments from students are the things that really matter to us about what we are doing. All right because it's you that are our customer and we want to make sure that we're getting it right for you and for your sons and daughters moving on into the world of work. All right, so do please have a read and there's a few comments on the actual note uh, on the presentation here about what people say. Okay, um, we, you know, um, I think last year, the number of students that came from recommendations was huge. And that matters to us because it means we are getting it right. And that's, that's key. Okay, we need to get it right. We want to get it right. Because the young people, your young people, are the future successes in our, our industries. And we want them to have the name Silverstone UTC with them. Um, Values for high performance engineering. So there you go. Lovely view of a, a pit stop. How the heck they do it in the time they're doing it at the moment. But they do. And part of that is because of the values they have of, as a team and the way they work together as a team. And <clears throat> we at the UTC, we win. So in other words, we, we, we rise to every challenge and strive for success. We act, we push boundaries, believing that anything and everything is possible. We care, we do take things personally, and we do take a pride in our work. We collaborate, we achieve our goals because we work as one, as a team. And we enjoy, you know, I want to enjoy coming to work. I want to enjoy, I want students to enjoy that as well. You know, it was absolutely lovely today, the student executive board and some of the prefects, they said, look, we need to reorganize the LRC. Okay, what do you want to do? So off they went, got on the CAD, actually produced a plan, worked out where the electricity was going, went to see um, the, the gentleman who's in charge of the site. And he went, oh, that's a good idea. And off they went, moved everything. It's beautifully organized outside, working together. They want, they want an area to work that suits them, Absolutely fine. Okay, it feels they, they're enjoying what they're doing. Now, this is a really interesting one. Because I think if you search on um, engineering innovation, okay, you find some pictures similar to this. Okay. And when I look at these, I'm looking at these and thinking, engineering, oh my gosh, look at that. However, if you just search on engineer, you find that. 
Now, hard hats, I'm sorry, hard hats are, yes, if you're civil engineering in the field, it's hard hats, okay? But engineering hard hats, sorry, no. So Google, you've got it wrong. Engineers, that's not. Actually, that's a better image of engineering. Now those hands, I'm, they are engineers' hands. Okay, engineering is not dirty. It's not hard hats. Um, it's far, far more than that. So what is this, this title, high performance engineering? Well, it's definitely not that. Oh my gosh, no, not that. Oh yes, a little bit of fluid dynamics on an Aston Martin. Yes, that's more like it, thank you. Ah, a little bit of simulation and a, a, a fantastic yes. So what is engineering? It's about applying the knowledge of science and maths to skillfully arrange for something to happen. It's not all about getting your hands dirty. It's, it is sometimes about taking things apart and putting them back together again, but it's very much about planning and thinking about the science behind something, the maths behind something, how are you gonna make it better? You know, you might be studying um, and you study in physics, you might be studying about resistors and resistors in series and parallel. Okay, so why, why am I interested in studying resistors in series and parallel? Well, actually, I'd quite like to reduce the number of resistors in my circuit because every joint I have on that circuit is, is an extra point of failure. So as an engineer, I'm looking to reduce possible points of failure. So my science and my maths is being used to make products better and less likely to fail. So if you are studying at Key Stage 4, you are going to study and apply your maths and physics. You're going to grow your vocabulary in a way that's almost like learning a foreign language. Um, and you're, yes, you are going to learn a lot, but you're not going to spend your entire time on hand fit, mills or lathes pillar drills, anything like that, laser, um, uh, the plasma cutter welding. No, you might do a small amount of that, but no, it's not going to be all your time. The engineering is quite theoretical. More places where our students have gone. Um, okay, in terms of that one. Now let's have a little look, because I, I don't want to be excused in any way of ignoring our second specialism. And that is business studies with events. Right, we are sitting in the biggest events venue, all right, outdoor events venue in the country. Oh my gosh, 140,000 people come to visit when it's the Sunday of F1. It's amazing here, lap of lights is coming. So we're sitting on a big events venue. Um, you've got the NEC, you've got Stoneleigh, you've got um, venues in London. So, and you've got every single company who participate in events to promote their products. So the events industry in all its forms is actually a huge industry. It's had a really rough time with the pandemic. It's a little quiet at the moment, but it is one of the most important industri industries around to <clears throat> show, show off products, show off services, and for our, all of us to be entertained. So it's entertainment, it's festivals, it's venues, it's ex exhibitions, <laughs> excuse me, conferences, it's um, national and international events, it's tourism and it's sports. So those students coming in to look at business studies with events, They've got a huge range of industries that they could move into, a huge range to excite them, um, whether they're studying, they move on to an apprenticeship, or whether they actually go to look at um, um, events management at university. And certainly Silverstone and Mr. Pringle was talking last night about picking up some graduates who've studied events 
management and coming into the, the team at Silverstone. So it is a great, I think, career, actually. And the students studying it, they study, a, a main course is business. Because what is events? Events is skillfully applying every aspect of business within a big event. So they are some of the, the most knowledgeable people around. They're also very, very good problem solvers. They're great at um, working under pressure because imagine an event happening and this has happened. Oh my gosh, you've got to solve it. So they are superb at that, at timings, at budgetings, and really, really good at attention to detail. Um, some of the companies that our students have gone to. And there you go, look at that. You've got AMG, um, Mercedes. We've got students who've gone there. They've gone there to be in, in the business side of it, not the, just the engineering side of it. So yes, huge range of places they can go. Why are we different? Right, so a greater focus on the context of learning, making it real. Excellent links with employers. The curriculum stretches and challenges. It is definitely not easy. No one's coming here for an easy option. You have got some inspirational equipment and spaces. We constantly have high expectations, but try to make everything as enjoyable as we can. And our environment and our students, what we promote is mature, independent, and business-like. The environment's more like that, and we want the students like that. So when things don't quite right, we are constantly helping them to reflect and think, well, what would happen in business? Getting them to go, oh, okay, what's, what's it like? Why is, uh, well, how is a, a, a behavior management system in a school? What's that like in work? Well, okay, that's your code of conduct. What happens if you break it? So that students are seeing the bigger picture, not just the school picture. Now, at Key Stage 4, students coming in can choose one of the two routes. If students choose the high performance engineering, then they're going to spend um, 10 hours a fortnight doing engineering. Okay. At the moment, we are studying the OCR Cambridge National and students do the design engineering and then the manufacturing. Um, the new specifications for that OCR course have not yet been approved. They've been written, but they've not been approved. So can I just say we are looking at all options. And one option we are thinking about is actually looking at the EAL. Um, that's the course that the students do in level three. OK, so or one of the courses they can do. So looking at the progression and making sure that students in Key Stage 4 have the skills not only that apprenticeships want and businesses want, but also the skills and the knowledge to move on to Level 3 study. Students can also choose to do business studies with events and all the contextualization that goes with that, and that's where they're studying the BTEC in a business. Okay, so there's your first two options. Now, every student then in Key Stage 4 will do GCSE Maths. Key thing now is that we're aiming, we want fours. Actually, no, can I have five, six, seven, eight, nine, please? But uh, it's key, you know, if students want apprenticeships, if they want the world of work, if they want further studies, they need to be going, yeah, I'm gonna get my four and actually really, I'm gonna get five, six, seven, or eight, nine, much higher. Our students all do English language and English literature. And our students in science all do physics and chemistry. Now you can say, where's biology gone? Yep, I'm sorry, we don't do biology because we're not doing, um, we're not, our specialism is engineering. So we're doing the sciences that support our specialism. Okay, we're not doing bioengineering, that's not our specialism, so we don't do that. And then students have option subjects and you cho choose three of them. Computing, media, German, please note with German, you need to have studied it already in order to continue with it. Um, ICT, geography, um, uh, speed export, art and design and citizenship. So you choose three of those options um, to go alongside the kind of core offer. 
uh, they are school, it is a school offer, right? There isn't as much flexibility as we can put in, in key stage four, but there you go. And I think one of the things that you all need to kind of remember is we teach the whole of these courses over two years. So some of you may have started your GCSEs already. Don't worry about that. It just means that at certain times when you come here, um, oh, that bit's a bit revision. Ah, oh, that bit's new. Oh my gosh, okay. But that next bit might be revision. So actually, you've got quite an advantage in a lot of cases, but you do not have to worry. We cover everything. We also, of course, do core PE and um, PSHCE, right, including RSE. Uh, and that's where we're looking at life skills. We're looking at the skills you need to take you on further. And within that, with your form tutor, uh, we have assembly every week where we look at votes for schools. What we want to introduce you to is questions, thoughts, and we want you, you to become, all of you to become better at evaluating what's going on, finding out the fact from the fiction, putting your, and discussing your own views. So we all do votes for schools. Now, as I said, it's a four year journey. So at the end of year 11, um, students can choose one of three engineering routes with us. Now the extended diploma is where they study the equivalent of three A-levels in engineering. Um, and that is on the apprenticeship framework, that course. And within it, it's got um, right absolute top end engineering knowledge, but also the competencies that go with welding with um, milling, uh, machining, oh, sorry, lathes, machines, um, hand fit, um, maintenance. So it's got the competencies linked to those as well. Um, you don't add anything else to that apart from work experience. You're, you need to be looking for one day's consistent work experience uh, a week. And that's timetabled over three days a week. And then you've got one day where you are doing work experience. It's quite busy. The second route is the tech back. The tech back is where you study at the equivalent of two A-levels in engineering. And at the moment we're focusing on the BTEC. And then you would add one other subject. So my engineers add a variety. I've got one or two that have added business, a lot add A-level maths or A-level physics, um, A-level product design for those that are in, interested in design engineering. And the last route is the Silverstone back. Now, the Silverstone back has one qualification in engineering, and then students are generally adding two A-levels. These are students who really do um, excel, perhaps, in exams, because that final route is far more heavily laden to exams. Um, and the, the style of exam for that last route is you learn the content over two years and you're examined, whereas the exams with the extended diploma you are learning small chunks and then having a quick formal assessment. So it's, it's the top route is far more akin to what you would be doing in the world of work. Now, if you study and continue with the um, route, the business route, the business with events route, okay, um, you would study the um, A-level equivalent qualification in business and you can add the travel and tourism and we are looking at putting a double business qualification in. Um, and you can then add travel and tourism because we do have a lot of our students who really do want to travel. And you'd add one other A-level, which could be media, it could be English, it could be maths, it could be physics, okay. Um, or the Silverstone back route where you would ha have your business and you'd probably, you would probably add two A-levels to go with it. So just trying to paint the four-year journey that we have. Now, I've mentioned it before, but actually making work ready, highly employable individuals is key. So throughout what we're doing, we're trying to build self-confidence. Tutor groups are looking at volunteering and fundraising. Um, it was last week now, we all exited a building en masse and we all went on the track to raise money for children in need. We've raised in excess of a thousand pounds. It's the most awesome day costumes galore all right fantastic day really really good um businesses are 
are very, very keen to have people that give, not just take. So getting involved in that volunteering and fundraising is key. Visiting speakers coming in, though it's been a little more uh, challenging with the pandemic, working going forwards, we want them in all the time. Um, helping students to develop work ready skills, and most importantly, taking responsibility. Being able to talk about those, their soft skills, is something we constantly refer to, because when they um, go for an, an, an interview, or even on their application form, examples from soft skills are going to be some of the key things that help them to get those roles they that they really want. So our day, you'll hear about it, our day is nine till five. Um, it means we've got slightly longer to teach our subjects in the building. There is less of a reliance on homework. Doesn't mean there might not be some. So I currently, with my engineering, all right, I allocate quite a lot of time to my subject. Okay, if the students are really, really focused, they will get it done in the time that I've allocated. There might be one or two that need a little bit of time working on it at home because they haven't quite got it finished. Okay. Um, when it comes to revision for exams though, although we're providing some time in the building, no, I'm sorry, revision for exams does need to be done consistently and, and it can't just fit in the day. We have three lessons a day, that's uh, roughly two hours each, and they have breaks in. So don't worry, it's an hour, then a break. It's roughly an hour and a break, and an hour and a break. Um, the longer day and the lessons means it's got time for us to embed the learning during the day. And we have a slightly different day on a Wednesday when, when things permit, we've got enrichment. And enrichment gives us chances to do some slightly different things whether it be soapbox, um, we've done slot car racing, we've, uh, so when this extra sport goes on, I think um, Mr. Fitzhugh was saying, I've got this 32 sixth formers doing football at the moment. And I think he said it was like 28 doing rugby. So, you know, enrichment there. If it's not enrichment, it's a thing called PP, personal prep, which allows students that extra time to get things finished. So again, aiming that they get the idea that things are done from nine to five and they get it done just like they would in the world of work. Um, it is office wear for all, so smart wear. Okay, um, and I have to say the students, um, the boys certainly do love choosing their suits. Um, the song, uh, and I'm, I was standing in my class today, gosh, I like that tie, that's amazing. So it's great um, to be able to do that. Um, students will also need um, some form of, if they're doing engineering lab coat overall, um, they will need safety boots and goggles um, when they do work go into the workshop. And every student needs their own laptop. We do work on laptops here. We find it works very, very well. Um, it's not all the time, but yes, a huge amount of it is on laptops. So it's essential that students have laptops. There you go. There's some ideas of some of the enrichment stuff that we have done over the years. And yes, we do have Duke of Edinburgh Award going here. We've had, um, I think we have two students who've got gold over the years. Um, we also have got World Challenge. There was a meeting today. The next group is going to Borneo. And we have quite a large group, actually two groups going to Borneo um, in summer 2022. Um, they really looking forward to it and planning their fundraising activities, which was really, really nice. So early on, I talked about where our students come from. So here's our current bus routes. So you can see them, they're on our website, it gives you an idea of where our students come from. Um, there is all, there are also, get my English right, there are also the stagecoach buses that come directly into us um, morning and leave from the front door at night. They are, they are a service that's just a normal public service and you buy tickets from Stagecoach. I think it's 87, 88 and the 83. And then I start getting a little stuck. I mainly focus on curriculum. Buses are not my strong point. OK, but you can see all of that on our website. And it details where all the services go to and from. So what are we here for? This is my last slide, folks, and then I can hand over to questions and hopefully I've um, I've given you a flavour 
of us here at the UTC. We are here to build high performing, work ready young people in a college without walls. Of course, we've got well walls, but what we're doing is saying, we're not just looking in, we're actually looking out. Um, I'm sorry, this is online at the moment, um, but we are very, very conscious of COVID cases. They are quite low in the building, but we can't keep them consistently low enough at the moment. So we are putting measures in place because we are trying desperately to keep any disruption to our students to the barest minimum. All right, they're all heading for exams and we do believe there's gonna be exams next summer. And so it matters that we kind of work to protect their learning and um, keep disruption as low as we can. So I apologize it's online, but hopefully I have given you a flavor of us. And Simon, am I okay now to kind of shut up and stop sharing and people can ask me questions? Do you think that may works now? I think so. I think what I'll do is I'll bring the recording to an end. And <laughs> then if anybody's got any questions, more than welcome to uh, 